Hi friends, you might watch a YouTube tutorial and find that the version of Unity being used is old, new, or simply not the one that you're using. As a beginner, a common question is, what version of Unity should I use? First, you want to install the Unity Hub. How to do that is go to unity.com backslash download. And if you scroll down where it says create with Unity in three steps, start at step one and download the Unity Hub either for Windows, Mac, or there's even instructions for Linux. So after you do that, you will get this is the Unity Hub. You'll get this. So what you want to do is you click Install Editor. And it will recommend, uh, you know, 2021.3.23. I think that's a good idea. But let's say you want to download a different, you know, version. So you go to Archive. You click on Download Archive. Now, if you see here, there are a lot of different versions. And, you know, the first thing you might want to do, it's really natural to go here and think, oh, well, I'll just take this most current version. It's from April of this year, and I'll just download that. And I am going to say something that's a little counterintuitive. You actually want the most current version from 2021, just like the recommendation said in the hub. And the reason for this is because you want to be sure all the bugs have been sorted out and it helps you to stay just enough behind Unity's development and releases so your project works. Different packages that you might need for your VR application will be at different development stages and it can, can conflict with whatever version you're using and break your project. So you don't want to be changing your, your versions quickly all the time like you normally would if you were updating you know, Adobe software, for example, or even drivers. So that's why this is a little different. You want to find the balance, you know, of this, and that can be tricky, but just keep note of, you know, change logs or package updates, and that will help you determine when you should update to a newer version. And don't wait too long either, because you do want to get, you know, the latest version. Um, just be careful and conduct your testing, you know, when you do update to a new version. So how I remember this quickly for myself is I, I ask, what year is it? Then I subtract by two and then pick the latest LTS version for that year. Now, what that means, LTS is long-term support. And I really recommend this because this is something that Unity is going to continue to support. And so if you're going to be shipping a game, you know, you really want to make sure that this is a stable version that you're using. And so when you find that version that you, you want to download, all you would have to do is now that you have the Unity Hub installed, you click uh, Unity Hub right here. And let's actually do that. And then I'll open the Unity Hub. And then it's going to ask, you know, what do I want to install? And I do want to install Android build support because if you're building for the Oculus, you want it to be Android. Then you really don't need anything else um, for right now. You could always add these different um, platforms, these different modules later. So then we press continue and, you know, read all of this and agree to these terms and then click install. After you do that, you're going, going to want to create a new project. So we will click on projects to the left here and select new project from the top right. And now the next decision you have to make is what pipeline to use. I recommend using the universal render pipeline. And the reason for this is that it allows for you to use cool things like VFX graph and shaders and eventually it's going to replace the standard pipeline. So you might as well learn it now. I don't know when it's going to replace it, but it's been talked about quite a bit. So I would recommend that. Also, if you follow a lot of visual effects artists, you'll see that they often do use URP as well. There's also another version um, that has a nice sample scene. So you might want to 
try that out just so you can see how different objects interact and work when you build to your headset. But for the sake of this, I'm just going to keep it simple and use the 3D URP. And we'll name this project version tutorial. And then I save to an external drive. My biggest advice is I would not save to a cloud. So we're going to create this project. While that creates, I'm going to mention a couple more tips here. Um, in some cases, especially when it comes to following VFX tutorials, you may need to use the exact version from the video so that you can find all the tools correctly. And so the Unity package provided by the creator works properly. Even watching my tutorials, you might see slight differences depending on when I started the project. I'll try to stick to the latest version based on these best practices, but I did notice that my Animal Club was from 2020. <laughs> With that said, I recently looked at, you know, this latest 2021 version and found some helpful improvements that I want to point out to you when it opens up. Great. This is what Unity will look like when it first loads the sample scene. You can, you know, keep this if you want, but I normally remove the README assets. Something new that I didn't see in previous versions is that the sample scene automatically loads a global volume, which I think is really great. This is where you find all of your post processing. So we can get into that later. Another great feature that I don't remember that I'm thinking is new is that if you click on the game tab here, you can play unfocused. And why I like that is normally when you press play mode, it'll go right to the game view. Now, in other instances, you might want to use that. But once you've got your VR rig or VR origin set up, you're going to probably just want to test and look through your headset when you press play. So, um, the game, the game view looks like just funny. It looks a little warped. It just has a strange view because of the VR camera being used. So I generally just use the scene view or use my headset. So why I also like having the scene view pop up is um, because sometimes I like to check things like an interaction and see if an interaction is working or I you know, want to find specific component values while it's in play mode. So that's why I do like having the scene view open in that case. And the other thing that I thought was a really great new feature is this clock undo history. So if you are to dock this, which I think to the right would be really great. Now, let's say we add a bunch of different things to our scene. Um, What's nice about this is in the past, you could only undo like a couple times. And now you've got this undo history, which I find fantastic. And you could go over here and start picking and choosing what you want to keep, you know, based on all these different moves that you made. I just think that is so fantastic. You could not do this before. So that's it. I just thought that this information would be really helpful to you in case you see that I'm on an older version, but I'll try to keep that updated as much as possible. And of course, be sure to ask who, whomever you're working with what version they're using so that you both have the same one. And let me know in the comments if there's anything else regarding setup that you'd like me to cover in any future videos. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, friends.